Now you don't have to flush the carbon filter if you're going to use a compressed carbon block like one of our white blocks, uh, the CC models like a 2510CC or the green uh, carbons, the 2510GB. But with the KDF filter, which is the best carbon filter we have, you have to flush it. KDF filters are really dusty and you don't want that carbon dust going into a brand new membrane. You will uh, ruin the membrane. So we have to flush the KDF carbon filter. The first thing we're going to do is just make sure the filters are tight. Not over tight, but uh, from shipping they can loosen up a little. So I'm going to give it a little, just a little, little tighten. Not much. Generally these filters should only be hand tight. Um, and these ones were a little loose, so I'm just going to tighten them up a little bit. And then I need to take this line right here that feeds the input of the membrane. I'm going to spin it around to show you and pull this line up. Here's the output from the carbon filter and it feeds the input of the membrane. I'm going to undo this line. I'm going to pull the, uh, the reminder sticker off. This is a good sticker to leave on. I'm going to pull it off for now though. And the reminder sticker tells you this KDF carbon filter must be flushed thoroughly before feeding into a pump or a membrane. And there's also another one on a canister of every filter that comes with a KDF filter. So it's good to leave it on to remind you in the future or somebody else who's not aware that this needs to be flushed. So here we are. Here's the tube. The, the flow is going to go into the sediment filter, up through the carbon filter, and out this tube into this uh, beaker. And we're going to show you uh, what the carbon looks like coming out. We're going to turn the feed water on uh, slowly. Don't blast it. There's a lot of air bubbles in here. We want to bleed out the air and the carbon dust. And if you slam it with water pressure, you could cause a little havoc. So we're going to slowly turn on the input feed water. And you can visually see the water filling up. We're through the sediment filter now. Now it's coming up through the carbon filter. Oh! And you'll notice there's a lot of air bubbles. I'm going to turn the water pressure down a little. And you're going to notice there's a lot of air pockets coming out with the carbon dust. Uh, that's because the carbon is, is, has a lot of air pockets in it. And so you want to run this until the water comes out as a smooth stream and there's no air pockets bubbling out. So we're going to do that. You can see the stream cleaning up right now. So as you can see, that stream is really cleaned up. There's a lot less air bubbles in it. It's almost perfect. Uh, I've flushed about, about 10 gallons of water through this carbon already, and you can see the water is coming out clear. Now you can be confident of plugging this tube back in and feeding a membrane that we've got all the carbon dust out. I'm going to tell you a little trick though. The best way to flush a KDF carbon is to do what we just did and then let the carbon sit in this water all night. It beds the carbon down. It kind of binds any other uh, loose dust to the carbon chunks and it becomes less dusty over time. So bedding the carbon down is my favorite thing to do. If you have time, let it sit overnight and let the carbon bed. So we're going to dump this, oh, we'll just leave it here. Now we're going to hook up this tube back to the membrane input. Make sure it's fully seated, like that. And now we're ready to run this GX200. Now I'm going to run it uh, into a smaller beaker. So once again, when I turn uh, the water pressure on, I'm going to turn it on very slowly. The membrane still has a lot of air in it. We want to purge all the air out of the membrane. The membrane also has some storage solution in it, usually a glycerin-based, a food-grade glycerin-based storage solution. And we want, to get, we want to flush that out too as well before we use the product water. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is by keeping the flush valve open right here. So once again, the flush valve is perpendicular 
uh, sorry, parallel to the drain line. And we're going to run, most of the water is going to go to drain in our sink. We're going to see a little bit of RO water is going to be made, uh, but not very much. And we're going to uh, generally run this for about uh, half an hour to an hour uh, to flush out the membrane. I'm going to run the drain water into this canister here so you can see uh, what it looks like when we flush the membrane. So here we go. We're going to start at the water slowly. The carbon filters now fill it again, and you can hear the water move through the membrane housing, and it's already coming out the drain line right here. The flush valve is open, and we're flushing out our brand new GX200. And if you'll notice, the water is very bubbly. You see that? Uh, that's the storage solution coming out of the membrane. And uh, in a little bit, there'll be drops coming out of the RO side, the permeate side of the membrane. So we want to let this run for uh, about a half an hour. Uh, if the, if the water is really warm, a half an hour is fine. If the water is really cold, you could let it run for an hour. And we're just going to let this uh, storage solution flush out of the membrane. And here we go. We've already started making some RO water. Even though the flush valve is open, we're still, uh, reverse osmosis is happening. And we're making some permeate water. Uh, and generally, you want to take the first 20 gallons of permeate water and just discard it. You'll notice if you look at the drain water, it's not completely uh, translucent like clear water. It's a little bit yellowish, and that is the storage solution in it. So now, now that the membrane's been flushed for about a half an hour, I'm ready to give it full line pressure. And then I'm going to close the flush valve. This puts a GX200 into normal production mode, and you can see the production increased quite a bit from when the flush valve's open. I'll show you what that looks like. Flush valve closed, sorry, open. RO production slows down. Flush valve closed. RO production speeds up. And we're looking at 200 gallons a day of RO water. And you can still see the bubbles coming out of the permeate line because the permeate side of the membrane still uh, needs a good flush. You'll also notice that the, uh, on the, the first initial water that comes out of this, the TDS will be a little higher, and that's the storage solution. Um, membranes need to break in. They're instruments, really. They're scientific instruments. So uh, this membrane is really going to break in over the, the first few days of using it and flushing water through it. It's going to speed up production. The rejection is going to get better. It's going to be tuned in. And that's it for hooking up a GX200.